Gases, Part 1, Kinetic Theory and Boyle's Law. In this video, we will apply a submicroscopic model to explain the behavior of gases, and we will predict the pressure or volume of a fixed amount of gas at constant temperature. Kinetic theory is a model we use to understand the behavior of matter when it comes to things like pressure and temperature. It is an especially useful model regarding the behavior of gases. In its simplest form, kinetic theory models gases as a bunch of individual particles bouncing around and bumping into stuff. This is what causes gases to have pressure. It's the submicroscopic version of a mosh pit at a metal concert. The particles are assumed to have mass, but to take up basically no space at all. They never stop moving and bouncing around, and when they do bump into each other, they do not stick together. The more speed they have, or the more mass of the particles, the more kinetic energy they have. As a result, gases with higher temperatures have particles moving around more rapidly. Let's stop to consider this for a moment. Recall the last time you held a balloon. What did you observe whenever you squeezed the balloon? You probably noticed that as you squished the balloon more and more, it pushed back on your hand more and more. In other words, as you decrease the temp volume of the gas, the pressure of the gas increases. That's this observation, but what's the explanation? Why does this occur? To explain this behavior, we need only to consider the kinetic theory model of gases. When you decrease the space available for the gas particles to bounce around in, by lowering the volume, the particles will collide with each other and with the walls of their container more frequently so the pressure increases. The observation that the pressure in the balloon increases as the volume decreases is known as Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that at a constant temperature for a fixed amount of gas, the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional. Inversely proportional means that as one of the variable increases, the other decreases by the same factor. For example, if you double the volume of a gas, then its pressure will be cut in half. Or if you cut the volume down to a third, then the pressure will triple. Boyle's law is expressed as an equation with P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, where P1 and V1 are the initial conditions and P2 and V2 are the final conditions. It is important to note that with this equation, as with any equation, the units must agree on both sides. So whenever volume and pressure units you use on one side of the equation, you'll need to use the exact same units on the other side. Here's a typical problem that we can solve using Boyle's Law and a little bit of algebra. The pressure of a sample of helium in a 1 liter container is 0.988 atmospheres. What is the new pressure of the gas if the container expands to 2 liters? Pause the video and solve the problem yourself. Here is the solution to this problem, so let's take a look. First off, we need to recognize that the new pressure will be P2 in our Boyle's Law equation. So we'll need to solve Boyle's Law for P2 by dividing both sides of the equation by V2. Then we can substitute in 0.988 atm for P1, the initial pressure, 1.00L for V1, the initial volume, and 2.00 liters for V2, the final volume. Taking 0.998 times 1 divided by 2 will give us 0.494 atmospheres. Without really doing any calculation, we could have predicted this pressure because the volume was doubled, so the pressure would be halved. That's an inversely proportional relationship. Here's a second problem that can be solved with Boyle's Law. The volume of a gas at 99.0 kilopascals is 300.0 milliliters. If the pressure is increased to 1,410 milli millimeters of mercury, what will be the new volume? Pause the video here and solve the problem yourself. Now, because the problem is asking for the final volume, V2 will be our unknown variable. But before we go too far, I noticed that the two pressures were not in the same unit. 
so I chose to convert the millimeters of mercury into kilopascals. If you chose to convert the kilopascals to millimeters of mercury, that works too, and you would end up with the same final answer for V2. Also, we can predict that the volume is going to decrease almost by half because the pressure goes up from 99 to 188 kilopascals, which is almost doubling. Anyway, then I solved the Boyle's Law equation for V2, and I got P1 times V1 divided by P2. Substituting 99.0 kilopascals for P1 and 300.0 milliliters for V1, and 188 kilopascals for P2. Finishing the calculation gives us V2 equal to 158 milliliters. Neat! Thanks for watching this video. In this video, you learned how to apply a submicroscopic model to explain the behavior of gases and to predict the pressure or volume of a fixed amount of gas at constant temperature. Later, 